Hello everybody! Welcome back to my channel. It has been such a long time. It's been like five months, I think. Yeah, five months. And I haven't filmed. And let me tell you, my life has gone through some crazy changes since then. One being, I just have to throw this in here. I'm in my new house. My old new house. And I'm filming this video in my spooky old garage. The light that you're seeing here is literally the only light in the entire garage. I cannot see anything beyond these ring lights. Nothing. It's pitch black. So <laughs> it's gonna add to the spookiness of this video. This road that I'm about to go down with my YouTube channel is really exciting for me and I'm so excited for the future of my channel. On that note, today and probably for the rest of my videos, we're going to be talking about spooky shit. And I mean spooky shit like, like paranormal shit. Getting into the dark history of a lot of things. I really hope you guys stay with me on this journey because it's gonna be fun and scary. I'm kind of scared, but it'll be okay. <laughs> we are going to be talking about the most haunted places in Salem, Oregon, my hometown and where I live and also where everyone I love lives. <laughs> if you're from the Salem area, you're going to get a kick out of it. And I'm not only going to be diving into the haunted places of Salem, I'm going to be diving into haunted places in Oregon. Don't get me wrong. This is not going to be all of them. I'm just going to be touching up on them a little bit. It's not going to be all of them. I'm really excited about it because, holy shit, it's Salem. Let's just go ahead and get into it. So if you couldn't tell, I am drinking a lovely White Claw. I'm kind of thinking that like... What would you call this series? Spooking and Bizen? Spookin' and Boozin. Tell me what you think of that idea. Tell me what you think about Spookin' and Boozin in the comments, please. Let's just get started. So I'm looking at my phone for reference. Salem tends to be like overlooked a lot because, you know, Salem, Massachusetts, the witch trials, the violence and all that stuff, like it's famous. <laughs> Learning what I know now, like there's a lot of dark history here. There's just a lot of shit that goes on here that doesn't get talked about that often. That's so why I was kind of like eager to like talk about it just because not only is it my hometown but it's just not talked about that often. And please if you like know of any of these places or have experienced anything in these places or know any other places, comment below. I would love to hear your experiences. Number one is going to be the hometown buffet. The Hometown Fucking Buffet. Are you kidding me? If you happen to pay a visit to Hometown Buffet for dinner, you might just get a little bit more than what you bargained for. Because this is said to be one of the most haunted buildings in Salem, Oregon. Some of the strange occurrences that have been reported include doors that slam by themselves, running footsteps in the women's restroom when there's nobody there, and the ghost of a lady in a white dress who is believed to be the wife of a former owner. She was actually murdered in the building by that owner. The owner of Hometown Buffet, the original owner, murdered his wife there. And you know, I've gone there so many times and I have felt very weird going to the bathrooms. It's been that way since I was a kid. I mean, I never understood why I guess this makes a lot of sense. That's fucked up. <sighs> Number two, the Oregon State Capitol. There is certainly no shortage of ghostly tales at the Oregon State Capitol. In fact, one board member, Sandra Allen, has even written a book about them called Ghosts in the Capitol. Some of the witnesses who have experienced paranormal activity here have described hearing phantom footsteps on the marble floors seeing doors slam shut by some unseen force, even hearing soft, disembodied whispers and voices in empty rooms. 
There have also been a handful of reports of an apparition who is a dead ringer for a representative who passed away in 1978. Number three, the Mission Mill Museum. The Mission Mill Museum is made up of a small group of historic buildings that includes a church, several residences, and a mill. To witnesses, the ghost of a former miller named Wright Menser is still lingering in the mill. He has been seen on a number of different occasions. There have also been many sightings of a second apparition at the museum, this time a woman who is seen running across a bridge near the mill. I know what bridge that is. I know exactly. Okay. The woman has yet to be identified, but she certainly makes regular appearances, so she is obviously tied to the mill in some way. I wonder who she is. <laughs> Number four, the Bush House Museum. The Bush House Museum is an Italianate style mansion built here in Salem in the 1870s by Asahel Bush II. I probably didn't say that right, but who fucking cares? It is also considered to be one of the most haunted houses in Salem, Oregon. Locals say that it is Asahel's youngest daughter, Eugenia, who haunts the property and that she is merely keeping a watchful eye over the family home. Her apparition has been seen in various spots around the house and she is often blamed for messing with the controls of the air conditioning system. There have also been reports of strange shadows, unexplained cold spots, and disembodied female voices. It is believed that there are several other spirits that reside here with Eugenia, but she is certainly the most dominant one and she likes to make her presence very known. Okay, Eugenia, okay, I see you. <laughs> I swear, the second I hear footsteps in here, I think I'm drying out some sweet grass or, or sage right now. Maybe I should smudge. Maybe not. I don't know, it's too late for that. <sighs> Number five, the Elsinore Theater. According to local legend, the reason why Elsinore Theater is one of the most haunted places in Salem, Oregon is that there was a boy murdered in the men's bathroom. This certainly makes sense because witnesses claim to have looked in the mirror and seen blood splatters in the reflection. Of course, when they turned around, there is no blood to be seen in the room. However, this is not the only tragedy here. The owner's daughter also died in a theater after falling from the balcony. She is also said to haunt the area, and a female apparition is regularly reported on the balcony. So sad. <laughs> Number six is Fairview. I plan on actually doing a full video and interviews on Fairview, because it is such a creepy and eerie place. It has such a dark history, and it's really interesting. Fairview was a state facility for people with developmental disabilities, which was established in 1907. It remained in operation up until 2000. All of the buildings, including the former school, have now been demolished. The development is now under private ownership, so be warned, any trespass... trespassers... Any trespassers will be prosecuted. Jeez, okay. Call the popo. There have been frequent <laughs> have been frequent reports of a female apparition wandering the, f the grounds of Fairview at night. It usually appears near one of the cottages on the grounds where the school once stood. There had also been reports of a male figure passing through the kitchen of Holderness Cottage, which is also now demolished. This was the part of the Fairview that was used to house the most aggressive residents, but those who have seen the apparition say he is not in the least threatening at all. Another hotspot at Fairview is Withycombe Cottage, which is also now demolished. Or more accurately, the old sister near it. This was a site of a terrible tragedy in 1923 when one of Fairview students, Holly Pollock, went missing and it was assumed he had run away. However, around three weeks later, pieces of hair and skin started to come through the water pipes and his body was discovered in the cistern having drowned. It's so creepy in here. <coughs> Number seven, Croyzen Creek Road. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I definitely know which road this is because I've definitely driven down it. I didn't see shit, but drive down it at night. Legend states that a little girl was killed by a speeding vehicle when she was crossing the road and 
Ever since the tragic accident, there have been multiple sightings of a little girl and a little boy on the road. It is not known who the boy would be, but some have suggested he too could have been a victim of a road accident much earlier than the one everyone knows about. So this next one blew my mind because I had no idea about this at all. And I kind of want to go there. Number eight is the hanging grounds. Now, if anywhere in Salem, Oregon was to be haunted, then surely it would have to be the hanging grounds. This area on Lower Church Street served as the town hanging ground in the 1800s. There were at least four executions carried out here, one in 1851, another in 1859, and two in 1865. And of the local tales are to believe, not all of them were justified. Why did people just go around hanging people back then over things that they couldn't even prove? I don't understand. Help me understand, okay? The first known hanging here in 1851 was one surrounded by some controversy. William Kendall was executed after a very questionable trial and some believe that his spirit is still roaming the area in search of his vengeance. Or perhaps just looking for the opportunity to clear his name. The site is occupied by a covered parking lot where there has been a handful of reports detailing some strange activity happening after dark. <laughs> Nine, Oregon State Prison. The North Guard Tower of Oregon State Prison has long had a reputation of being one of the most haunted places in Salem, Oregon. One former prison guard states that he was told way back in 1956 when he first started working at the prison that Tower 4 had a history of strange things happening in it. He says that whenever he was on graveyard shift, he did not feel as though he was alone. This could be due to the fact that the tower was built on top of a former prison graveyard. The graveyard was abandoned in 1917 before being paved over in 1923 to serve as a recreation yard. Nice! Some people are just buried here. Let's just pave it over and play some fucking basketball. 10. Oregon State Hospital. We all know this one. We all know. Topping the list of the most haunted places in Salem, Oregon is of course the Oregon State Hospital. Built in the late 1800s, the hospital was originally intended to serve all patients, but due to overcrowding issues, it soon became a more specialized facility for the insane and the mentally handicapped. There must have been hundreds if not thousands of tortured souls who died in this building over the years. Is it really a surprise that this has left its mark? The hospital also boasts a creepy underground tunnel that was allegedly used for transporting dangerous patients between buildings. It is so deep underground that the screams of the patients would not be overheard. Those who have been brave enough to explore what remains of the hospital say that they have felt an overwhelming sense of evil here and that they have heard phantom footsteps, seen doors opening and closing on their own, and heard a range of cries and screams from former patients. This one is certainly not for the faint of heart. So I'm gonna link this website below, so if you wanna check it out, you can check it out. But that's not the end of this. There's multiple places that I know of that are not listed on here, that's okay, but one that I want to say, just because I grew up there and it holds, it has a place in my heart, and just because personal experiences and people I've known, stories that I grew up listening to, I have to put it on here. And that is Chamala Indian School. Y'all, it is the oldest still operating boarding school in the United States. This school is over 125 years old. It first opened up in February of 1880 and it only begun as a elementary school. But as the years went on, it then grew to be a high school, serving the 9th through the 12th grade. And it is still operating. But I wanted... This is going to be a whole video on its own for me. I plan on doing a whole, like, hopefully docu-series on this, depending on just certain things. So, please stay tuned for that. It's going to happen. It's just... It might be a little bit, but... In 2016, numerous unmarked graves of students were reported to have been found at the Chamala Indian School Cemetery. Marsha Small, a North Cheyenne graduate at Montana State University, used ground-penetrating radar to scan the site, finding hundreds, if not thousands, of unmarked graves 
by comparing data to the 200 documented graves on site. Children at such boarding schools often suffered from epidemics in the dormitories of infectious diseases such as tuberculosis, influenza, and trachoma. Operations at the Chamala Indian School were investigated following the death of a 16-year-old student in December 2003 who was from Warm Springs, Oregon. She died of alcohol poisoning after being locked in a detention cell after being found intoxicated on school grounds. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Portland, Oregon investigated the incident. They found officials at fault. Well, I've just heard so many stories of the paranormal. Um, I know people personally that lived in the dorms and just some scary things that have happened. My dad has worked there literally like my whole life and my mom also worked there for a very long time. It's just a very crazy place with a very dark history and me being a Native American myself, it's just, it hits right at home. Like I just, I cannot find anything on it. It needs to be talked about. Like these things, this place needs to be talked about. Another place in Salem that wasn't listed that I'm really interested in um, investigating kind of and learning more of, which also could be a whole video in its own, which it probably will be <laughs> if you stick around. It will be on the tunnels underneath Salem, Oregon. There's tunnels all over underneath Salem, Oregon that have a pretty dark history as well. I mean, I have so much to learn about them and I just think that it'd be so freaking interesting to dive into those as well. Top 10 most haunted places in Oregon. So the first one is Battery Russell. We start off with a little war history. Battery Russell was a military installation built in Fort Stevens during the Civil War era. During that time period, it didn't have much use. However, it did see some action. Japanese were positioned off the coast of Oregon and managed to fire at the Battery Russell and successfully sustaining damage. While there are conflicting stories of any casualties, some have reported seeing the ghost of a soldier milling around on the grounds. Number two is Cathedral Park. Located in Portland, this park was the site of a murder of a teenage girl named Thelma Taylor in 1949. Since her murder, the tales of her spirit being seen or even heard at the park have long been told. Some have claimed hearing screams coming from the park itself. Next is McMenamin's Edgefield. If you live in Oregon, you have heard of McMenamin's. For those who are not familiar with the name and live outside of Oregon, McMenamin's is a statewide chain with hotel and bar franchises scattered all over the state. I 10 out of 10 recommend McMenamin's is my favorite place for food, booze, music, and ghosts. Before this was a bar and resort, this was a poor house for the residents of Multnomah County. After the Second World War, the building became Rehabilitation Center. If you ever go to this McMenamin's, you may encounter a woman in white or hear a woman sing nursery rhymes. If you see or hear any of this, don't ask yourself what did they put in this drink. Also, McMenamin's Edgefield is like a place where they have tons of concerts. There's like a spa. There's honestly like anything. Like it's super cool. Definitely check it out. Okay, the next one is Geyser or Geyser Grand Hotel. Legend has it that the third floor of this hotel is teeming with spirits. Visitors have reported seeing lights flicker on and off almost instantly, and some say that the sounds of laughing and reveling could be heard on the same floor. Some of the hotel staff even outright refused to go up to the third floor even at night. Owners of the hotel brought these ghostly happenings to light almost 30 years ago. Since then, you can probably guess that some people are visiting the third floor for a peek at this paranormal activity. I mean, interesting, but what happened there? Why would it be haunted? Next is Lafayette Cemetery. The cemetery was said to be the place where a woman was hanged after facing accusations of being a witch. So you thought that Massachusetts was the only place where they were executing witches. Mm-mm, honey. Oregon, too. Probably all over the fucking place. 
gosh, it's fucked up. Even the locals are warning those to steer clear of the place. The reason? Some have claimed being attacked when visiting the cemetery by an unknown assailant. I have to go there. I have to go. Next is Piddick Mansion. And I was just talking to my boyfriend the other day. I want to go there so bad. And I probably will go there and I will take you guys with me. It was the home of Henry Piddick and his wife, Georginia. Georginiana. Georgiana. Henry built his fortune as a newspaper publisher and made his presence known in the wood and paper industries. Built in 1909, the Piddicks would live there until their deaths a decade later. It remained in the Piddick family until the early 1960s when it was purchased and converted into a museum. While the spirits of the Piddicks are not at a malevolent to those in the Lafayette Cemetery, they are known to play a few tricks on those who visit the mansion. These include closing open windows and locking them. Also, the sound of furniture being moved around may also be heard as well. Next is the Hesita Head Lighthouse. And I believe I have actually been here. I think I came here when I was a kid and as soon as I walked through the doors, it was eerie, it was creepy, and it was just, I felt that there was something there. I couldn't explain it as a child, but I think about it now and there's definitely something there. If you're in a coastal state, there's always going to be lighthouses. And as long as there are lighthouses, there's one that's bound to be haunted. Such is this case with the Hasita Head Lighthouse. It is said that the ghost who goes by the name of Rue is not fond of anyone making any alterations to the place she called home. She's known for her mysteriously setting off fire alarms and moving around various objects. But the spirit famously known as the Grey Lady may be frightening to the staff of the lighthouse, to the point where some of them have refused to visit some parts of the house due to the encounters with her. But she is mostly harmless to those who visit the place that is now a converted bed and breakfast. Come for the peace and quiet, stay for the ghostly welcome. Say less. Challenge accepted. Next is Highway 101 near Cannon Beach. Okay, we've all heard the stories of long stretches of road being creepy and haunting. Add being on a cliffside and you get Highway 101 just out of the Cannon Beach. It is said that for the past 50 years, various motorists have told stories about seeing a man covered in bandages. Some have seen him on the side of the road while others see him in their rearview mirror. Of course, with all spirits, he seems to vanish into thin air after you look back to see if he is in any danger. Some dismiss it as folklore, but if you're driving on this stretch of roadway, do drive safely and be alert. And for the love of everything, don't be jumpy and cause an accident. That road is dangerous enough as it is. The last one is Roseland Theater, which is kind of weird because you know, they'd be having concerts there all the time. And like, I just never knew. I mean, I've never been to a concert there, but I might have to go one. I have to, yeah, I might have to go to one. Okay. Before Roseland Theater, this building was a nightclub named Starry Nights. The club was owned by Larry Hurwitz. Hurwitz was believed to be running a counterfeit operation from inside the club. It was apparently exposed by one of his employees, a 21-year-old named Tim Moreau. Shortly after that, Moreau disappeared. It didn't take long until the pieces of the puzzle were put together, ending in the fact that Moreau was murdered. Her wits and an accomplice were convicted of the murder and sentenced to prison. While Moreau's body may have been found underneath the Willamette River, his spirit is angry and haunting the building. Locals have said that the theater might be one of the most haunted places in the state of Oregon. So the last one, I forgot that I wanted to add this in here just because I'm kind of familiar with the place and I know other people are too. So our last one is located in Southern Oregon and it is the Lithia Park. Lithia Park is often called the crown jewel of Ashland, with forested trails that make it one of the loveliest places to see the leaves turn in autumn. It's also one of the most haunted places in town, where visitors have reported seeing apparitions of three specific types. 
One is a pulsating image of a young girl who was reportedly killed at the site more than 100 years ago. Another is a dog-faced boy who lived in the area in the 1920s but one day mysteriously disappeared. Yet another is a logger who met an untimely death crushed by a tree at the park. Some say they can sometimes hear a faint whistling song, thought to be the tunes he would sometimes play on his favorite instrument, fashioned from an old milk jug. Alright everybody, that is going to be it for this video. And I know it was kind of short, but interesting to say the least. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I'm so excited for what's to come for my channel and I hope you guys stay along for the journey because it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be spooky. And if you like spooky, you should stay here because I like spooky. We can be friends. Also, don't forget to let me know how you feel about spooking and boozing. I'm kind of feeling it right now. It's kind of a vibe, even in my scary ass. Garage. Garage. My scary garage. <laughs> this is why I don't have friends. But yeah, so thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.